Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. Today, I got another mismatch Monday for you. You knew it was coming. It comes most Mondays, not all, but most. And today, we are going to do a card and dice game mismatch Monday between the 1990 world champion Cincinnati Reds taking on the 1990. 1990 Atlanta Braves. So now the Braves of 1990 were 65 and 97. And as I mentioned, the Reds were the world champions. The Nasty Boys. We all remember the Nasty Boys. And uh, the 1990 uh, Reds were managed by Lou Pinella. And I would guess that the 90 Braves might have been managed by Bobby Cox. Now, the Braves were terrible, but they were just on the brink of doing an incredible postseason run as a good postseason team in the years to come in the 90s. But 1990 itself, not so good. Today's pitching matchup, uh, you're going to have the Reds uh, facing Mr. Tom Glavin, and we are in Atlanta the uh, effects in Atlanta are uh, single is a 1 to 14 for both left and right and it's a 1 to 11 for home runs for both left and right and the Atlanta lineup is going to be facing Mr. Danny Jackson of the Reds and so with all of that out of the way we are going to get into the Reds lineup and I will get to the Atlanta lineup when Atlanta comes up but we will go over the Reds lineup. The first batter is going to be Eric Davis leading off and playing center field. He'll be followed by Billy Hatcher in left field, batting second. Hal Morris, great professional hitter, is going to be the third batter batting first. They're bat playing first base. In the cleanup spot is going to be Chris Sabo, the third baseman. Batting fifth, Hall of Famer Barry Larkin at shortstop. Batting 6th, Paul O'Neill will be the right fielder. Batting 7th, Billy Duran is going to be the second baseman. Followed by Joe Oliver in the 8th spot at catcher. And then bringing up the rear is General Jackson, Danny Jackson. So, um, and as I said, that lineup is facing Dan or uh, Tom Glavin. So let's get underway with this. And the first roll is a 5'10", and he is a righty batting against Glavin. And 5'10 uh, is going to be a catcher card X. So the catcher for the uh, Braves is Ernie Witt. And Ernie Witt is a 4'E3". So we'll see what 20 and 4 at catcher is. Uh, let's flip it over. Nope, I, I had the right side, I guess. Yep, catcher, 20 and 4. It's going to be a, po a pass ball and a foul out. So that is going to be one away. And uh, so Davis fouls out to catcher. And that brings up Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher up. He gets a 5-8. And a 5-8 is going to be a pop out to shortstop. And now Hal Morris is up with two down very quickly here and nobody on for the Reds. And that's going to be a 6-8, and that's going to be a single. So, um, single for Hal Morris. And that is a hit allowed by Glavin, first hit of the game. And uh, Chris Sabo. Chris Sabo is a batter with two out and a man aboard, and he gets a 2-5, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. And the shortstop throws on the first, and that's a 6-3 that ends the first inning for the Reds. That'll bring the Braves up to the plate. Uh, the Braves today will line up as Lonnie Smith leading off and playing left field. Jeff Blauser will be the shortstop. Batting in the third spot is going to be David Justice, the right fielder. 
followed in the cleanup spot by Ron Gant in the center. Then, uh, um, what's his name? Jim Presley. Jim Presley at first base. Mark Lemke at second base batting sixth. Andres Thomas in the seventh spot at third base. Ernie Witt, who uh, was involved in the uh, the X chart result in the top of the first, is going to be the catcher. And that's going to be followed by Tom Glavin in the ninth spot. So Lonnie Smith batting, and he gets a 5-12, and he is batting right. And that's going to be a single. So Lonnie Smith with a leadoff hit. And he is a stealing C, surprisingly. He had lost some of his speed by this time. Jeff Blauser is up. 5-3 is going to be a fly ball left field X. The left fielder for the Reds is Hatcher. And Hatcher is a 2-E-1. That is a 2. Uh, so let's see. Two, um, yeah, uh, wait a minute, two, he's a two, and that's a roll of two, so that's going to be a single, and it's going to be a single double asterisk, so runners are at the corners, and the uh, Braves are in business here, as um, Jackson has given up hits to the first two batters. Which brings up David Justice. And he gets a 3-5. He is batting against the lefty, and that's going to be a strikeout. So there's one out quickly. Well, not really that quickly, but... Um, so let's see. There we go. One down. Runners are at the corners. And Ronnie Gann. Ron Gann is up 4-9, batting right. That's going to be a single to right field. And it is going to score, an, score the first run of the game in the uh, person of Lonnie Smith coming across. Runs are at first and second with Jim Presley up. Jim Presley getting a 6-4. And that is going to be an out. It was a ballpark single, but it's 1-14, to 14 and that's an 18, so he is out. Um, and that's going to be a fly ball right field. So Lemke is the batter. Let's see if Lemke can knock a man in here. 2-5 against a lefty is going to be a walk. So the bases are loaded. The general has loaded the bases. And uh, so let's see here. Record that. And um, yeah. And Andres Thomas is the batter. So it's all up to Andres Thomas to try to get a little more. You know this is the world champion. So they're going to need more than just one run. And they don't get it. It's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. So he goes 6-3. to three. The Braves do get a run, uh, which is very good against, uh, you know, the world champion of that season when you, you're on a team that lost 95 games. But we'll see what happens here. Barry Larkin is the batter in the second to lead off for the Reds. 3-6 uh, against the lefty is going to be a single. So Barry Larkin is aboard with a hit. That is the second hit allowed by Glavin. One man aboard. Larkin is a stealing A. I'm going to be inclined to say they're going to they're just going to see what happens as the inning unfolds and that was a good idea because that's a double. That's just a clean double and Barry Larkin is a running uh running one to 17. So I think they're going to send him. It's it's 17, and it is to uh, left field, and the left fielder's arm for the uh, for the Braves is a plus three. So it's going to be basically he's safe. 
I mean, if I'm reading that correctly. I don't know. I'm not sure um, if there has to be, like, it can't be automatic, but I'm just going to call it automatic. I mean, let's roll it and see if it were 20 comes up, but it didn't. <laughs> so, anyway, that is going to be a double that scores a run, a run scoring double by Paul O'Neill. And Glavin gives up his third hit, first earned run, and we got a tie game with Billy Duran up. And Billy Duran gets a 1 9, and against the lefty, that's going to be a double. So we got another situation here. We could send the runner on first. That's O'Neill. He's a 1 to 13. Um, hmm. And that is also left field, so that would be a 1 to 16. They're going to send him. And he does make it. So the. Uh, who was that? Duran, yeah. Duran doubles in O'Neill. And Glavin has just given up the second run, and that's against no outs. We've had a single and two doubles, and with no outs here, and Joe Oliver up. And he gets a 210, and that is against a lefty, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. So the 6-4-3, the dreaded 6-4-3, pops its head up, and there are two down. And the batter is General Jackson, and he gets a 6-7. And that is going to be a, he is a left-handed batter. That is going to be a, uh, let's see, that's going to be a walk. So the general takes a walk. First walk issued by Glavin. Man aboard, two down. And Eric Davis gets a 6-6. Six, six. He is a righty, and that's going to be a fly ball B. So, and that is a uh, fly ball to left field, so F7. And that scores... Two runs, two runs for the Reds. They lead two to one. We go to the bottom of the first, where the batter will be Ernie Witt. He gets a 5 7, and uh, 5 7 is going to be a line out to first base. So Glavin is up. He gets a 6-6. Six, six. That's going to be a strikeout. That is going to be Jackson's first strikeout. And Lonnie Smith. We're back to Lonnie Smith with two down. And he gets a 3-10. And a 3-10 is going to be a walk. So Lonnie Smith has reached base uh, both times that he's been up. And Jeff Blauser is the batter, and he gets a 1-8, and that is going to be a strikeout. So that is the third strikeout for Jackson. Or for, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, for, for Jackson. So, um... No runs come in for the Braves. In the second, we go to the top of the third with Billy Hatcher up. Billy Hatcher. He gets a 2-7, and he's batting against the lefty, and so that is a fly ball center field B. That brings up Hal Morris, the first baseman. He gets a 4-3. And he is a lefty, and that is going to be a strikeout. Glavin with the K. That's his first strikeout of the game for Glavin. I guess this was before they were calling everything five miles off the plate as a strike for him. 
And uh, that gets a 5-5 five, five for Sabo. Sabo is the batter with a 5-5, five, five, and he's a right-handed batter, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for the Braves is Blauser, I believe, yes. And he is a 3-E-29, and that's a 7. So we will check that out. Um, he's a three, and that was, what, a seven? So seven and a three is a ground ball B. So Sabo grounds out, six to three to Blouser, and the Reds don't get any runs there. It's the bottom of the third in a very good game between these two teams. Uh, but as I say, the, the Braves were about to be a very good team in 1990. Justice is the batter. He gets a 6-7. And he is a left-handed batter, so that is a strikeout. And Jackson strikes out his fourth guy. Ronnie Gant. Ronnie Gant gets a 2-10. And a 2-10 is not going to be a home run. <laughs> It is actually going to be a uh, fly ball to uh, center field. A deep fly ball to center field, but nonetheless. Jim Presley is the batter. They almost had a run right there. They had almost had the tying run. 4-6, he is a right-handed batter. Um, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Presley with the K, um, well, Presley is the batter with the K, but Jackson with the K as the pitcher. That's his fifth strikeout of the game. The Braves came close there. They had a, a, a deep drive to center field that almost went out, but it didn't. We're going to the top of the fourth with Barry Larkin up. And he gets a 1-6, and that's going to be a ground ball third base. So Bar Larkin goes 5-3. One down. Paul O'Neill gets a 5-10. 5-10 is going to be a catcher card X. We've already established that. That's an 18. And the uh, catcher is Wit, and he is a 4-E-3. Probably going to be another out. Yes, it is. So that's going to be a pop-out to catcher. And Billy Duran is the batter. And he gets a 1-9. That's going to be a, a double. Bill Duran. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Yeah, that's going to be a double. So Bill Duran finds himself at second with two down. And Joe Oliver, the batter. And he gets a 1-4, and that is going to be a ground ball B. Ground ball to third base. So 5-3, to three, and the Reds score no runs in the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth. In a 2-1 to one game, very close game between these two rival National League teams. Lemke is the batter. He gets a 4-7, and... Um, He's a switch hitter, so he would be batting right, and that's going to be a walk. Lemke aboard with a walk. That is Jackson's second issued walk of the game, and Andres Thomas is the batter. He gets a 5-2, and he is a righty. That's a ground ball pitcher B, so now he's at first base. Ernie Witt is up. Ernie Witt getting a 110. That is going to be a pop out to second base. And Tom Glavin is the batter. And he gets a 510. He is a left handed batter. That's going to be a catcher card X. 
the catcher for the uh, the Reds is Oliver, and Oliver is a 3E4. That is an 18, and that is also a pop-out. Pop-out to the catcher. So no runs come in for the Braves. We go to the top of the fifth. In a very good 2-1 game between these two teams, the batter is going to be Danny Jackson, and he will hit. He's pitching well so far. 6-5 is going to be a strikeout. So Dan Jackson leading off with a strikeout. That's uh, only Glavin's second of the game. And Eric Davis is up. Eric Davis getting a 2-8, and uh, that's going to be a strikeout. So Glavin's starting to pile up the strikeouts now, which he was known for. And Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher gets a 5-3. He is a right-handed batter. That is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. And the third baseman is Andres Thomas. He is a um, 3E37, so let's hope it doesn't go to that. Um, that is a roll of 8, so it will. It's going to go to an E37, so let's roll them. Roll the bones, 9 uh, and 37 is uh, going to be an E1. So Andres Thomas plays that off his face, and we got a man at first base. So that's going to be an E5, and Hal Morris is the batter. And he hits 3-9, and that's going to be a, looks like a single double asterisk maybe? No, 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 it's going to be a strikeout. So Hal Morris strikes out, and... They get no runs despite getting a base runner in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth where the score is 2-1 to one Reds. And the, uh, and the batter is going to be we're back at the top of the lineup with Lonnie Smith. And he gets a 3-9 and that is going to be a walk. Lonnie Smith... Has, uh, can I just tell you that Lonnie Smith has gotten on every time he's been up. And um, so Jackson's having problems with Lonnie Smith. But that's the only guy. Jeff, Jeff Blauser. 6-5. He is a right-handed batter. That's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Larkin, who's going to be a 1-E18. That's probably going to be on his air rating, though. Um, it, um, what is that? A roll of 14? No, it isn't. No, it's going to be a ground ball double play. So that goes six, four, three. And, uh, justice is the batter. Now uh, justice, I believe was the guy who went deep to the wall last time. Um, and couldn't hit it out. I'm not sure. Maybe it wasn't him. It might have been Gant. In fact, it was Gant. Uh, but Justice is going to get a 5-7 batting left. That's going to be a line out to first base. And he actually has been out every single time. So we're going to the top of the sixth, where we still have a 2-1 game between these two. Death struggle here, pitching matchup between Danny Jackson and Glavin. Chris Sabo is the batter. He gets a uh, hit by pitch. So Chris Sabo gets on by getting hit by Glavin. Barry Larkin is up. Of course, remember Tom Glavin could have played hockey. He was an excellent hockey player. 6-8 is going to be a single to left field. So, or wait a minute, no, 6-8, wait a minute, 6-8, and a right-handed batter is still going to be, well, it's going to be a single double asterisk. So runners are at the corners now. And uh, that's the fifth hit allowed by Glavin and Paul O'Neill. 
is the batter with runners are at the corners, no outs. They're, the Braves are going to play for the double play because they just got to hope that they can hit a little better. And in fact, the Braves didn't really have a problem with hitting. They had a good offense. So you got uh, O'Neill going 6-7 as a left-handed batter, and that's going to be a walk to load the bases with no outs. And the situation... I think the uh, situation still holds. They're going to play back, hope for the double play. Duran is a switch hitter, and he's going to be batting right with a 2-5, and that is going to be a single. It's a split single, so it's only a one base hit, but it does drive in Sabo. And they now have another run. Joe Oliver's up. They're coming to the bottom of the lineup. That's good for Glavin. 5-3 is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a uh, he's a 2. That is a 9. So let's see what happens on 9-2 at pitcher. Um, so it's going to be on his E rating, and his E rating is a 7. So we're going to roll the dice for the 7. Hopefully he can turn a double play here. 9 It's going to be a ground ball double play. So um, another run does score, but that's going to be a 1-4-3 double play. And um, there's two down. This guy scored. Uh, that guy probably went to third. Yeah. So you got a runner at third with two down now, and Danny Jackson is the pitcher, and he's going to bat, and he's got a 5-9, and that's going to be a strikeout. He strikes out. That's Glavin's um, fourth strikeout of the game. But the Reds have struck for two runs when it doesn't seem like the uh, Braves, it seems like the Braves are having a tough time getting runs and hits and base runners against Jackson, but we'll see. Um, Jackson actually in 1990 was 6-6 six and six with a 361 earned run average. So he wasn't untouchable. Um, and Ron Gant is going to be the, uh, I've got him as the batter here to lead off for the Braves in the sixth. And that is a 6-5, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. He is a 1. That is a 19. Got to believe that's going to be an out. And it is. So he goes 6-3. to three. Jim Presley is the batter. Not one of uh, Presley's better years. I think this is probably uh, when he was starting to wind down a little bit. But 5-7 uh, for a righty is going to be a single. Or wait a minute. Hey, let's see. He is a right hand. Yeah, it's going to be a single. So Presley gets himself aboard. That is only the fourth hit I've got as for Jackson allowing. There's one out, one on, Lemke up. He gets a 4-7. He's going to be batting right. That's going to be a walk. So here you go. This is what I was just saying that, you know, Jackson isn't that unhittable. And they are showing. They're un, you know, he's not that untouchable. He's already walked four guys and allowed four hits. So he's been pretty lucky so far through the game. Andres Thomas gets a 5-5. Five, five. Batting right, that's going to be a fly ball left field B. So that's two outs. And our Ernie Witt is going to be the batter. And Ernie Witt gets a 5-2, and he is batting left. And that's going to be a walk. So that loads the bases for the Braves. And you got to believe that they are going to definitely go to the bench and try to find a pinch hitter, a suitable pinch hitter here 
for uh, for Glavin. Um, let's see. They are no doubt going to pinch hit Francisco Cabrera. So he's going to be batting for Glavin. And he gets a 1-9, and that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he goes 6-3, to three, and they don't get any runs. The Braves do not get any runs in the 6th. That also... That also closes the book on Glavin for this game, um, who went, what did he do? He completed six. He allowed six hits, one walk, and four earned runs. And so we're going to have to see who pitches for in place of Glavin now. They're going to bring in Kent Merker. Kent Merker, another lefty. He is a two-inning reliever, though. And in 1990, he was 4-7 and seven with a 317 earned run average. So you're going to go Kent Merker from here on out. And Eric Davis. We're back to Eric Davis at the top of the Reds lineup here for the seventh inning to bat against Merker. And that's going to be a 1-7 against the lefty. That is going to be a line out to shortstop, Eric Davis. Billy Hatcher's up. Billy Hatcher getting a 6-10. He is a right-handed batter. That's going to be a fly ball to center. Uh, the center fielder is, I believe, a 4 He's a 4E9. That is a 3. And uh, 4 and or, uh, 3, yeah, that's going to be a single. That is definitely a single. So Merker allowing a hit. He's got a poor outfield. They have, not only are they not good at range, but they're terrible at throwing people out. They got bad arms, too. So um, Hal Morris is the batter with one on and one away. And he gets a 5-9. Batting left. And that's going to be a strikeout. And uh, Hal Morris, surprisingly, he's been up four times. He's one for four, but the three times he got out were all strikeouts. Two down, and Chris Sabo is the batter. He gets a 1-11, and that my friends, is going to be a home run for Chris Sabo. So Chris Sabo gets a two-run homer. And uh, now you got to believe it's, it's really... The Braves hung in there, but you got to believe right now that's going to be it. I mean, I don't see the Braves coming back from this. They had their chances, and they blew it. And uh, Barry Larkin is the batter. And he gets a 1-7. And that's going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he goes 6-3. to three, And that is it for the Reds. But a Chris Sabo two-run home run gives the Reds a 6-1 to one lead going to the bottom of the seventh. And... Um, Let's see. Uh, the pitcher? No, no, the pitcher was up last time. Okay, so Lonnie Smith is up here in the seventh. And he gets a 5'11". So 5'11 for a righty. Um... Is going to be a ground ball first base. The first baseman is Hal Morris. Got to believe he's good. He's a 1E18. Or wait a minute, no. 
He's no, he's a four e seven. Not good defensively. Five and four at first base is going to be a double. So just hold the presses here a little bit. That might be that they might have something going here with a leadoff Lonnie Smith double. And uh, the hit by Jackson is the fifth allowed. He's still out there, mainly because they got the runs that put him up by a, a comfortable margin. But we'll see how long that lasts. Um, Lonnie Smith is up 211 against the lefty. That's going to be a ground ball third base B. Or wait a minute, that was uh, that was that's Blouser. So 211. Actually, 211 is. It's still it's going to be an out. Um, it's going to be a. Uh, line out to second base. David Justice is up one on and one out. And he gets a 312 against uh, lefty and uh, that's going to be a foul out to the catcher. Which brings up Ronnie Gant. Ronnie Gant. And he gets a 2-7 and he is uh, going to get a fly ball left field B. F7, the Braves can't score anybody. We go to the top of the eighth. Merker is still going to be out there. I mean, he might as well. Paul O'Neill is going to be the batter for the Reds. He gets a 4 9, and uh, that's going to be a strikeout. Merker with the K, that's his first strikeout since coming on in relief of Glavin. Bill Duran is up 4-9, that's going to be a strikeout. So, let's see. That is another, that's another K. And Joe Oliver. Joe Oliver with a 2-3, and that is going to be a fly ball right field. F9, no runs come in, and they are going to take Jackson out. So Jackson pitches seven innings. And we're going to go get Jackson's replacement. And the replacement pitcher is going to be, it's going to be one of the nasty boys. Let's bring in one of the nasty boys, Randy Myers. Randy Myers in 1990 was 4-6 with a 208 earned run average, and he struck out 98 guys in 87 innings. And Jim Presley is going to be the first unfortunate soul that gets to face him uh, here in the eighth inning. And he gets a 1-5. He is a lefty. Um, and that's going to be a strikeout. And that's off Presley's card like he needs the help. So uh, let's see. Strikeout. Next batter is... Mark Lemke. Mark Lemke, it's a 4-11. He would be batting right. That's a fly ball left field X. The left fielder is a 2-E-1. That is a 17. Got to believe that's going to be an out. And it is. It's a fly ball V. And that brings up Andres Thomas. And Andres Thomas gets a 6-5. He's batting right. That's going to be a single. So they do get a hit off of him. First hit allowed by Myers in his first inning here of work. Ernie Witt, the batter. He gets a 2-10. And that is going to be a ground ball to the first baseman to end the inning. Or, yes, to end the inning. So, that is a ground out three. 
No runs come in for Atlanta. They got one. Atlanta got, just to recap, we are going to the top of the ninth now where the Reds will be batting. The Reds have a 6-1 to one lead. The Braves got one run in the first inning, and they have done absolutely El Zilcho since then. And the batter, the leadoff batter is scheduled to be Merker, but they are not going to do that. Um, or wait a minute, no, this is the... Uh, this is the uh, Reds, and the uh, batter is scheduled to be the pitcher, Randy Myers, and they will pinch hit for him. Okay, hold on. Let me see here. Yeah, yeah, it is supposed to be um, Randy Myers, and they will pinch hit for Randy Myers. With Mariano Duncan. Mariano Duncan in 1990 hit 306. And he's going to be the batter that faces Merker, who is uh, out there for his third inning of work. Again, he might as well be. He gets a 6 8. Um, and a 6 8 is going to be a walk. So, ninth inning, leadoff walk, Eric Davis up, gets a 6-6, six, six, and a 6-6 six, six for a righty is going to be an out, and that's going to be a line out to shortstop, one away. Billy Thatcher is the batter. He gets a 6-9. That's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Blouser. He is a 3-E-29. That is an 18. That may be an out. 18-3. That is a double play. So no runs come in for the Reds. And now the... Uh, the Braves are batting in the bottom of the ninth, trying to get five runs. So obviously, with the pitcher's spot up again, they are not going to do that, right? Yes, Ernie Witt was the last batter. They're going to pinch hit for the pitcher. And... Uh, the pinch hitter, let's see find somebody that can hit something. You know what? They're going to go with Tommy Gregg. Tommy Gregg is going to be the pinch hitter for the pitcher. And Myers has to come out because they did pinch hit for him. So we'll go get the other nasty boy, Rob Dibble. Rob Dibble in 1990 was 8 and 3 with a 174 earned run average and he struck out 136 guys in 96 innings. And Tommy Gregg gets to try to face that dude. That's going to be a 4-5 which is a strikeout. Yeah. Shocker. So um, there's a K. One down. Lonnie Smith up. Lonnie Smith gets a 2-11. 211 is going to be a ground ball third base B. That is two down. And Jeff Blauser is the batter. He gets a 4 9. That's going to be a walk. Yes, that is going to be a walk. So they do have a batter here. Try to keep it in the lie with Dave Justice up. He gets a 3 8, and that is going to be a strikeout. And so that's what you got. That's the final score. The final score being here, the Reds 6, the Braves 1. It was an extremely good game until the 6th inning, but the Reds started to score runs in the 6th, and they ended up running away with this thing by the score of 6-1, and that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.